Hello everyone, in this video I will be explaining 10 high yield concepts in 10 minutes. To make this interesting, I had asked a few questions on Instagram. I will share the results with you along with the answers and explanations. Question number 1. A new drug effectively reduces the complications of diabetes. This drug is likely to dash the prevalence of diabetes. Let's assume there are 5 new cases of diabetes every year. Usually, 2 people die every year from the complications of diabetes in our little population. Currently, there are 10 people who have diabetes. One year later, we would have 10 plus 5 minus 2 cases overall. But if we have a drug which decreases the complications of diabetes, it prevents the death but does not prevent the number of new cases. So, one year later, we will have 10 plus 5 plus 2, that is 17 cases overall. So, this new drug will increase the prevalence of diabetes. Epidural anesthesia can cause dash blood pressure. The answer to this question is decrease in blood pressure. This is because epidural anesthesia blocks the sympathetic nerves that are responsible for vascular tone. This causes vasodilation and hence decreases the blood pressure. Question number 3. Maternal NSAID use can result in oligohydramnios or polyhydramnios. This is the glomerulus. This is the afferent arteriole and this is the efferent arteriole. Prostaglandins dilate the afferent arteriole. NSAIDs block the action of prostaglandins. So if NSAIDs are used, the decrease in function of prostaglandins will reduce the dilation here which will result in low blood flow. This, this will lead to a decrease in GFR. Decrease in GFR will further result in decrease in urine output and hence oligohydramnios. Question number 4. A newborn baby whose mother had poorly controlled diabetes during her pregnancy will have dash glucose levels at birth. When a pregnant woman has poorly controlled diabetes, a lot of glucose is transported to the fetus. In order to cope with this, the islet cells of the fetus will undergo hyperplasia. So, there is a lot of insulin in the fetus. At birth, the newborn stops receiving continuous glucose from the mother. So now, there is a lot of insulin and very little glucose. This results in hypoglycemia. A patient who has been receiving treatment for hypertension presents with dry cough. What drug do you think he was taking? Captopril and thiazides are both antihypertensive drugs. Captopril is an ACE inhibitor and thiazide is a diuretic. Angiotensin converting enzyme breaks bradykinin down. Captopril blocks this enzyme. This results in an increase in bradykinin. This increase in bradykinin results in dry cough. Fasting makes the pain of dash ulcers worse. This is a gastric ulcer and this is a duodenal ulcer. Keep in mind that acid makes ulcers worse. When we eat food, there is acid secretion by the stomach. On the other hand, when food enters the duodenum, there is alkaline secretion here. This is why food makes the pain from gastric ulcer greater and duodenal ulcer pain decreases with food. A 48-year-old female complains of recurrent diarrhea, cutaneous flushing and wheezing. She is diagnosed with carcinoid syndrome. At this point, what is the most likely location of the tumor? Carcinoid syndrome arises from a tumor which secretes serotonin, histamine and VIP. When the tumor is in the intestine, these substances reach the liver before they go to the rest of the body. The liver can metabolize these substances, so there is no symptom seen when the tumor is confined to the intestine. When the tumor metastasizes to the liver, its secretions directly reach the systemic circulation. Since our patient 
is showing symptoms, there is a higher chance of finding the tumor in the liver. Kernicterus is caused by dash hyperbilirubinemia. Kernicterus is the deposition of bilirubin in the brain. Before bilirubin gets to the brain, it has to cross the blood-brain barrier. Only lipid-soluble substances can pass through this barrier. Direct bilirubin is conjugated and is water-soluble. And indirect bilirubin is fat-soluble. So, so, it is only the indirect bilirubin that can cross the blood-brain barrier and enter the brain parenchyma. So, the indirect and not the direct bilirubin is responsible for kernicterus. Desilose test will be DASH in a patient with Crohn's disease involving the terminal ileum. Desilose is a substance which is absorbed by the duodenum without the requirement of any enzymes. When there are issues with the duodenum, desilose absorption will be low and the test is considered positive. In Crohn's disease involving the terminal ileum, desilose absorption will not be affected. This is because desilose absorption takes place in the duodenum and not in the ileum. I've mentioned that the 10th concept is going to be a surprise, so if you've made it so far, this is the 10th concept for you. How do we manage a patient who presents with facial flushing due to niacin? Niacin stimulates the breakdown of arachidonic acid. It increases prostaglandins which cause vasodilation. Since aspirin blocks cox, it prevents the formation of prostaglandins. Hence, we should use aspirin and not antihistamines for niacin-induced facial flushing. I hope this video was helpful. I make medical videos. I strongly believe in the importance of active learning. So I also create quizzes based on what I teach. Additionally, I make videos explaining the answers to the quiz so, so that, that you can figure out what your weaknesses are and you can get a complete knowledge of each and everything that is being talked about. For this quiz, let me know how many questions you were able to answer correctly and subscribe to my channel for more med videos and quizzes. Thank you.